a, a for-profit company that has social goals can be self-sufficient? I see. Uh, well, I, I think a for-profit company, uh, I mean, if it's enduring, I mean, it is uh, sort of self-sufficient in an economic sense because if you're not self-sustaining, you, you go out of business. Uh, but in terms of uh, its social goals, uh, when you analyze what a company does, it produces a product that's needed in that environment. And if that environment doesn't need the product, it goes out of business. So there's, in a sense, there, there's a social attribute to producing a product. But, you know, from a, an institution's point of view, uh, I, I think if you define what it is that you want to engage in with, with the company and, and engage in that conversation, uh, you, you'll find that there's a, there are a lot of common goals. So the key is to find a product that people actually need. Uh, yes. Uh, for our next question, we go to uh, Puebla, Mexico. Go ahead, please. Buenos días. Eh, quisiéramos hacer una pregunta al doctor eh, Jones de la Escuela Normal Benito Juárez de Zacatlán, Puebla, México. Sí. La pregunta sería, ¿cuál es el proceso y los resultados en instituciones de educación pública al implementar la estrategia? When implementing this strategy uh, about Gracias. fusion of the free market. Thank you. Uh, we, we didn't actually get the first part of the question. Can you repeat the first part of the uh, question? Which is the process? for uh, public education institutions. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you comment on the public education institutions? They, they are actually um, um, a, a public institution, but, but we are seeing more and more the pressure on the university to also becoming self-sufficient in terms of uh, um, non-public uh, income, if you will. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you know around the world that, that that's happening. There's more pressure uh, on universities to become more self-sustaining. In other words, use fewer governmental resources. Uh, one way to do that is to uh, look at some of the tools that are being used uh, in online education, for instance. Uh, for instance, we have a piece of software. We paid fifty million dollars to uh, create, which we're giving. We have donated free. Uh, to the universities and schools around the globe. So using that software platform, uh, if, if you have something unique that's being taught in your university, a lot of universities do, that's needed around the world, uh, you might look at uh, using the software platform that you can get free and, and putting that, that special course, that special degree program, that special project that you're doing at the university online for global consumption. That, that's one way that, that you could uh, perhaps go global and reach out and acquire revenues. Thank you. And uh, for our next question, we go to Sinaloa, Mexico, please. Go ahead. Uh, we are calling from COAS. This uh, fusion of the free market um, has to do with the goal of entrepreneurs to have a social goal. Um, can you uh, um, ex uh, expand on the concept of um, uh, um, social benefits from the entrepreneurial point of view? Well, I think that, you know that there there's to some degree perhaps a, a new new style, a new class of entrepreneur arising in the new environment uh, in, in in the new world, uh, and that is uh, uh, the entrepreneur with a more cosmic view of things, and, and not a narrow uh, view of one product and and that's it, uh, but the view that encompasses the product's impact on the environment around them, the world around them, uh, its usefulness. Uh, and, uh, and many times uh, it, it is appropriate and advantageous for, for a company, for instance, to combine itself uh, with an institution whose integrity and reputation 
uh, is very helpful in moving or in creating a product and, uh, and arrangements uh, are made uh, through the negotiating process uh, to get both the institution and the company involved in the creation of this product and maybe it's a product that is, is suggested by the institution as well uh, for the benefit of all and it ends up being profitable but it ends up serving a public need as well like um, eGlobal Library is a good example of that. Thank you and, and we go to Hidalgo, Mexico for our next question please. Go ahead. We are calling from Instituto Tecnológico Latinoamericano. How does educational technology um, influence in the fusion of the free market? Educational technology, uh, I think, has a, a very uh, high influence in, in the free market now because. Uh, Education, you could say that, you know, there's an education race in the world because to get a good job, you need a good education. And workforces need trained. And education has, in fact, in the global economy, become strategic. It's, it's no longer a, a nicety. It's absolutely strategic. So there is a huge part uh, to play in all this for the academic institutions around the globe. And thank you. Uh, Puebla, Mexico, go ahead, please. Bueno. Bueno. Eh, Teteles de Ávila Castillo, Puebla, Escuela Normal Carmen Cerdán. Estamos muy atentos escuchando las propuestas del doctor John y tenemos dos preguntas. We are, um, que son de gran preocupación para la región. Very glad to hear you. And uh, in, in the, from the point of view of the new role of the company, where is the role of identity for a company and how does it fit into the um, fusion of the free market and what is the social impact um, of the new identity? Well, I, th I think that's a, that's a very, very uh, cogent question because one of the things that a company is looking for is um, identification uh, of its brand and the advancement of its brand. And, and the brand of a company or the brand of a product is simply what the outer world, you know, outside the company thinks of you as a company, thinks of your brand, uh, what defines it. And, and that, in a large sense, uh, determines what it is that you can do as a company or, or you know, what, what you're allowed in terms of the marketplace, uh, to, where you're allowed to go with your business. And identifying uh, with institutions uh, really th that are streamlined with where you're trying to go with your product or with the brand of your company is, is, is very important for a company. Thank you for your questions uh, for this segment of the program. Let's now move to the second module of our program. Thank you. The major stages of free market fusion process are, one, mission research and selection, which is identifying opportunities and needs through scanning and knowledge building. Two, planning and agreements, evolving innovative solutions and structuring partnerships. Three, key actions, carrying out the mission. And four, outcome assessment going forward or phasing out. If an innovative solution incorporates a fairly non-traditional concept, it will be easier to work with a partner who already is comfortable with the non-traditional concept. Another consideration is that many potential partners may be constrained by people or organizations whose vested interests might be threatened by the entity's move into a new arena or into a relationship with another autonomous entity where the vested interests have less control. A major contributor to the organization, for example, may forbid it from entering into a new relationship for fear that the contributor will lose control of the organization's goals and direction. 
this is a fairly predictable response. Fear of change is a familiar reaction, especially for constitu constituencies such as large labor unions, large businesses or government bureaucracies that have vested interests which are very vulnerable. Therefore, it becomes critical that we not go beyond a level of friction that is acceptable, where even though fear of change may be present, it is counterbalanced by enthusiastic commitment to the opportunity at hand. Outcome assessment is a step most likely to be omitted or to be replaced by a mission accomplished celebration. It is a step that is vital for every project, whether a success or a failure. Some sage once quipped that behind every success is the sum total of the leader's failures in life. Interestingly, it is the success that is the most difficult to assess. We are so inclined to focus on everything that went right and the sheer brilliance and good luck of the team that the near disasters and what lay beyond the second fork in the road that we did not take are quickly forgotten. It is these elements that form the most important lessons that we take away from a mission and that can serve us best when the opportunity next coming along presents itself. Outcome assessment should take place in the first few weeks after accomplishing a mission's objective, if the mission is to continue. Then it will be a natural part of the continuing planning. If the mission group has worked itself out of a job, then schedule a meeting for assessment with the team members as early as possible. Then move quickly to closure and on to identifying new opportunities ahead of you. The world has been caught in a web of suffering that decades of goodwill, foreign aid, and well-intentioned efforts have failed to eradicate. The problems have seemed incapable of solution. Yet are they? Where do we begin? How do we begin? We can begin with free market fusion. Dr. Alvin Toffler, whom many, including myself, regard as the father of modern futurists, once said that the difference between a classical education and a future education is that the former involves learning and then stopping learning. But the future education will require learning, unlearning, and relearning. In a few minutes, we will take a look at just how this learning concept can work in the concept and context of free market fusion. Free market fusion makes it necessary to think and create outside the box of traditional assumptions and policies. We must gather our most powerful resources and engage the challenges. Jones International University was just such a creation, and we're going to turn to it now as an example of how an entrepreneur, entrepreneur invented and driven institution works. It was a commitment to such solutions that led me in 1987 to found a cable TV channel we called Mind Extension University, or me, you, the Education Network. This cable channel enabled 30,000 students to take courses from over 30 colleges and universities, all via cable television. The courses were broadcast by cable and satellite TV around the world. It was a very rewarding experience for me personally, and I became convinced that education could be democratized around the world by fusing it with technology. The internet soon proved to be even a more, an even more powerful delivery system for education. And in 1995, we launched Jones International University, a totally online institution. In 1999, it became the first fully online university to receive U.S. regional accreditation. JIU has the same accreditation as universities such as Notre Dame, Purdue, University of Chicago, University of Colorado, and so on. We were required to create other new electronic tools as well, specifically Jones eGlobal Library which is a suite of online research tools that cover most major academic disciplines and key business areas. It is linked to more than 8,000 of the best-of-breed resources, 
libraries, and databases around the globe, including the Library of Congress, with which we are very involved. An innovative solution to a new challenge. Jones eGlobal Library was the first digital library specifically designed for online learners. And it's now being licensed to other e-learners uh, and e-learner providers around the globe. Like Jones International University, eGlobal Library was designed to deliver information to the student rather than expecting the student to deliver themselves to the library. If you have not experienced eGlobal Library yourself, you should. You can access the website at www.e-globallibrary.com. In addition to creating eGlobal Library, JIU also took the lead in developing an innovative online course delivery and management platform to support the online learning process called the Jones Standard. This software has become known for its ease of use, its highly collaborative and interactive communications tools, and its open architecture for advanced and flexible course design. In an effort to expedite the democratization of education around the globe, JIU recently made the decision to offer the source code for this $50 million software platform free of charge to the world's educational institutions for delivering their online courses. This software, known as the eEducation or the Jones Standard, is available in both English and Spanish. One could reasonably posit that more dramatic new forms of communication have come to us in the last 170 years than in all of the preceding 360 centuries. And information has been flooding these new forms of communications at an equally daunting pace. As futurists Marvin Cetrone and Owen Davies pointed out in 1999, by the time today's kindergarten graduate from high school, the amount of information in the world would have doubled four times. The high school graduating class of 2010 will be exposed to more information in one year than their grandparents encountered in an entire lifetime. The class of 2010 will have to assimilate more inventions and more new information than have appeared in the last 150 years. Today, we contemplate more deeply one of the most disruptive, yet potentially life-enhancing, communication technologies of all, the Internet. To quote John Perry Barlow, co-founder of the Electronic Frontier Foundation and a fellow at Harvard Law School, with the development of the Internet and with the increasing pervasiveness of communication between network computers, we are in the middle of the most transforming technological event since the capture of fire. Statistics back him up. Whereas it took 38 years for radio to achieve 50 million users worldwide, it took the World Wide Web a mere four years. The Internet will provide us the potential to vastly increase the reach and impact of our educational institutions throughout the Americas. Let's turn back to education now. And I'll point out some of the free market fusion initiatives we are taking with our Jones education programs to further reach those who want better access to courses and degrees. You know, whether we call it borderless higher education, transnational higher education, or the global electronic campus, it's all the same. We have today an unprecedented opportunity to deliver education and its benefits to everyone throughout the world. Our challenge is to use these new forms of communication to bridge the boundaries of countries, to translate and share universes of knowledge housed in our organizations of higher learning, and to find a common language between competition and collaboration. In the United States, we have seen numerous examples of free market fusion, several of which I have had the opportunity to be involved with personally. For example, Many of you may be familiar with our Library of Congress, the national repository for more than 126 million books, papers, films, and other materials from the United States and the world at large. 
1987, newly appointed Librarian of Congress, Dr. James Billington, set as his strategic goal the digitization of the library's most unique and historically important materials so that school children and scholars would have access to these items. An enthusiastic champion of new ways of doing things, he looked to the private sector not only for funding, but also for business, strategic planning, and technical expertise. One of the results of this collaboration has been the National Digital Library Program. This program is the library's initiative to make widely available digitized versions of its vast collections. Now freely accessible on the internet are millions of records from the library, including the entire card catalog, a congressional database, major exhibitions with texts and images, and hundreds of thousands of images from the library's incomparable map, photographic, manuscript, and film collections. The Library of Congress now has digitized more than 12 million items from these collections, online and accessible to all. The project is a model for similar, for similar national digitization efforts taking place throughout the world. Another example of free market fusion has been the collaboration among private and public entities in the U.S. Creating, uh, to, and to create higher education's phenomenally successful online learning initiative. Since the emergence of Internet-based online learning in the early 90s, and the accreditation of Jones International University, the number of online students, courses, and course providers has exploded. According to the most recent analysis done by the Sloan Consortium, over 1.6 million students in the United States took at least one online course during the fall of 2002. Well, more than half a million students took all their courses online. The report further projects a 20% increase in those numbers for the fall of 2003. Among U.S. public colleges and universities, 97% offer at least one online or partially online course, while nearly half offer an online degree program. Those of us who have worked with or within academia know how amazing it is that these numbers, these changes in how education is delivered, have been achieved in such a relatively short amount of time. How successful has this been? Well, the corporate e-learning marketplace worldwide would surpass 34 billion by 2004, according to industry analyst International Data Corp. Keep in mind that the market for e-learning was less than 2 billion at the end of 1999. As a businessman and an educator, I look forward to working with organizations throughout the world to help craft and put in place the best solutions to support learning throughout our countries. And as a citizen of the world, I look forward to, in some small way, helping to contribute to the answers that will bring literacy, higher education, economic benefits, and quality of life to all areas of the globe. As part of this process, Jones International University has made the investment necessary to provide its free licensed Jones Standard e-Education software platform in both English and Spanish, and to offer both its Master's in Business Administration and its Master's in Education degree programs in both languages as well. Speaking in economic terms, however, raising the education level of all people is just good business. Our national economies depend on the efforts of an energetic and educated workforce. When people learn, they earn. When they earn, they spend. Education drives the marketplace, and the marketplace drives national prosperity. Education has become strategic. Unemployment rates also support this point. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's research in its 29 member countries, people with a college education had a less than 4% unemployment rate in 1995, while those with only a secondary education had over 12% unemployment. If we want our population to participate in the economy, they must work. And if we want our people to work, 
we must ensure that education is available to them. Jones International University is designed to be the world's university and is committed to collaborative efforts with partners around the world to successfully deliver the empowerment of education to as many students as possible in the coming years. Is it an opportunity for market expansion? Absolutely. But it is also an opportunity to expand our knowledge of each other and our ability to support the democratization of education throughout the world. It is an exciting challenge. It was Father Pedro Arupe, 28th Superior General to the Society of Jesus, who said, What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, who you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. I am an entrepreneur. I fell in love with creating innovative solutions to daunting challenges and then helping others to benefit from those solutions. I believe that the opportunity we have now to share education across the Americas and around the world will be one of the most exciting challenges of this young century. We at Jones International University look forward to participating. As science fiction author and futurist H.G. Wells wrote more than a century ago, human history becomes more and more a race between education and catastrophe. We are here today to ensure that it is education that wins that race. Thank you. We will now continue with the second question and answer session and uh, our first question comes from Sinaloa, Mexico. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Buenos días. Manuel Román, eh, de la Torre Académica de la Universidad Autónoma de Sinaloa. I am Manuel Román, from Sinaloa. Adelante, Con por favor. La siguiente pregunta. Si consideramos que la responsabilidad social... If we consider that social responsibility... En parte se considera como una actividad total del it's, Estado. It's uh, considered as a responsibility of the state in many places. Y la consecución de utilidades como una responsabilidad and de las empresas. the goal of uh, profitability as part of the of the company's um, responsibilities how can we start a process of fusion of these two responsibilities in a company Gracias. thank you well i think that the uh, to some extent, in a lot of companies, there, there is really a new awareness, I think, and that social responsibility is not just the responsibility of the government. It's the responsibility of everybody, if you're living in a democratized society, at least. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, and, and I think there's an acceptance of that responsibility in, in, in many uh, uh, corners of business. Uh, so I think there's, hopefully there'll be a changed attitude towards that going forward, too. So it's educating the public sector about the, the, the private sector and vice versa. Yeah, uh, and, and that our goals are really uh, congruent. Great. Uh, we go to uh, Puebla, Mexico for our next question. Um, I think we don't have Puebla online. Uh, all right, well, uh, l let me uh, ask you a question. Um, the, uh, you have uh, established Jones International University, <clears throat> and uh, um, it is a truly international university. Do you have students all over the world or in, in many, many countries? We have students uh, from over 70 countries now, and we're in the process of helping um, United Nations with their United Nations Development Program uh, virtual 
uh, academy to train middle management in about 55 different countries. So yes, it's designed to be the world's university, and, and we have students from all over the globe. Great. Uh, thank, thank you. And uh, we go to Chihuahua, Mexico, for our next question. Go ahead, please. Good morning. We want to know if you have real examples of companies merging with non-profit organizations and what success have they had? No, I, I have no uh, examples of, of companies actually merging, you know, combining operations in, in toto uh, with uh, non-profits or uh, institutions. Uh, I'm sure that some of that has taken place sort of in, in of course in the education uh, environment. Uh, there have been acquisitions by for-profits of, of academic institutions in other parts of the globe. Uh, but I think most of those have been the acquisition of for-profit learning uh, institutions. So I'm, I'm not, I don't have anything tip of mind. Okay, our next question comes from uh, Tecamac, Mexico. Go ahead, please. Good morning. What we want to ask has to do with what are the results of um, virtual education through Internet? Uh, what is the quality of education through these electronic media? The quality of, of the education is very high, uh, and, and if you were to interview students or professors that are, are teaching in both environments, both the on-campus environment uh, and the virtual environment, for instance, a lot of our teachers are, and we have teachers from Oxford University, Harvard, Stanford, uh, Carnegie Mellon, uh, London School of Economics. I mean, th th these are, and, and so they teach in both environments. And I think many of these teachers uh, would, would tell you that not only is there more interactivity with the student, uh, but but the quality is the same. It's different, you know. But but the quality is really there. And uh, and without the quality, I mean, you have to be a zealot about quality. Or, you know, and education is a special process. Uh, and and without quality, you have nothing, basically. There is also the difference uh, in in online education that the emphasis is on learning and not necessarily teaching. It's 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 the learner that that is that has a responsibility for learning and not necessarily uh, the, the institution who is held responsible for the learning of the learner. That's, that's absolutely true, Fred. You know, what, what's, what's really happening here is that, and then maybe Isaac Asimov is, is a good person to turn to, because he said that uh, for technology to, to be truly basic, it must change the entire world. And examples of these in the last half century are the coming of jet planes, uh, television, and solid state electronics, but dwarfing these, dwarfing these, however, is the communications revolution. And what we're doing, basically what we're proposing is fusing the telecommunications revolution, the, the communications revolution with education, so it moves around the globe seamlessly and democratizes education on a global basis. Uh, our next question, we go back to uh, Puebla, Mexico. Go ahead, please. Good morning. The question is the following. How important is it to develop the abilities and skills such as the in learning the English language in order to achieve social contribution? And also, uh, what, um, what is the success of digital media based on? Um, in places where the culture is um, not so open to change? Well, well two questions. One, um, uh, how necessary is English in all of this? Uh, and I would have to say that, unfortunately, at, at its current state, uh, the lingua franca of the, uh, 
of the internet is probably maybe a, some kind of pidgin English. It's not even really particularly good English, uh, but but it, it's important at, at this point of evolution. Uh, and uh, you know. I